Good morning, everyone. I've got my work clothes on because, well, I got a lot of work I got to do today, which is going to be great because I already know what I'm going to be having for dinner tonight. So we're going to look at the third Make It Now, Bake It Later, which is going to come in so handy for me today because I have got a busy day. My parents have something they need to do this afternoon, so I will be going over there to sit with my grandmother and also help clean her room and do some other little chores over there. So it's going to be really great for me to have dinner in the refrigerator just waiting for me to pop it in the oven when I get back home. So let me show you what we're going to make today. I thought this little casserole, sausages and apples, looked really good. I like the concept of the apples and the brown sugar going with these sausages. So I've already got these here that I'm going to be using. I need to slice up the apple still. I've already cooked the rice. And I'm boiling water for a step that I will show you very soon. So let's go ahead and get all of this ready, our sausages ready, and then all we gotta do is pop it in the refrigerator and start our day. Now there's hardly any prep to this recipe, which is great for us. And all I'm doing now is pouring the boiling water over the sausages. She said to let this stand for three minutes and this will remove the grease um, from the sausages. I've never done that before, so it'll be interesting to see if that works for these sausages. And in the meantime, we'll go ahead and get our apples ready. All we're going to do is core and slice these apples, leaving the peel on. I believe we've got everything ready. So first, let's go ahead and start with our apples. And she didn't give quantities on the brown sugar, so we're just gonna go ahead and use what we think looks good. And before we continue, I'm gonna pour myself a cup of tea. Our weather has been a little bit odd. It's kind of making some throat issues <laughs> and stuff. Um, so I'm gonna try this buttermint tea and see if I can get my throat to feel a little bit better. This has got mint in it, but it also has vanilla. That sounds really good. And back to work. Now we gotta add our rice. Pour that on top. And our sausages are done soaking. And you know, I think this actually worked. I don't know if you can see on the camera there, but there is some oil um, that is kind of floating on the surface. So I do believe it actually um, drained some of that um, oil from the inside of the sausage. So we're just going to arrange them on top of the rice. Here's a little bit of the odd part. We're going to add a quarter cup of ketchup to this overall. Now, she did specify not to put any more than that, which is why I actually measured it this time, <laughs> which is something I don't normally do when making a casserole like this. I'm going to go exactly by the recipe this time and just put a quarter cup on the sausages and call it done. Pop this in the refrigerator and it's going to be ready for us when we get back from our busy day and we just have to bake it and dinner is done. And that's it. I'm ready to drink my tea 
and head on over to the parents house so I can get some of the chores done and visit with my grandmother and get some stuff done over here too because now I don't have to worry about what am I going to make for dinner so I'm going to do all that and then we'll come back together for our taste test I'll also show you some of what's in book number three and what I thought about it because I do have some cons on this one um, along with some pros. So stay tuned for that and let's go ahead and get this day started. All right, made it to the parents. I'm gonna start my chores, but first, let's go ahead and pick a project for Mama to do. I try to keep a lot of little paint projects uh, for her because she does have arthritis in her hands and her fingers. So this helps to keep them very nimble. So let's see, since we're getting close into Valentine's Day, let's go ahead and have her paint one of these projects. I think that'd be really cute. And these are just some of the projects that she's actually finished. I try to keep her very busy and she really enjoys doing them. Well, I got my chores done. Did you get yours done? Your projects? I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> Can I do I do that, Brown? Yeah. You want to say hi to my subscribers? They've been asking about you. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> you want to wave to them? <laughs> She's already completed one project. She's working on her third one here because she's already painted this little bear right there. So she is well on her way to decorating her mantle for Valentine's Day. So just got home after spending the afternoon with Mama, and it's probably a good thing I got home when I did. It sounds like something's brewing because the wind seriously sounds like it's going to rip the roof off of our house. So craziness going on outside, but I'm all nice and cozy inside and all I have to do is wait for my oven to preheat so I can stick dinner in there. And I love that because I have other chores to do. So now I can get some other things done while this is in the oven and I don't have to worry about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that in there. And then after about an hour of baking, we'll finally be able to do our taste test. And while we've got our dinner in the oven, I'm gonna go ahead and show you um, book number three and kind of my thoughts about it overall. Now, again, we have another little fun blurb on the front. Delectable dishes, tasty and fun, all prepared ahead. You can see this one was published in 1965, but copyrighted in 1964, so I have the second edition. We again have a table of contents. This time we've got odds and ends instead of cocktails and miscellaneous. And there are some really interesting, uh, and I think fairly easy casseroles to put together except the only thing that I noticed in book number three as opposed to one and two is that there's a lot of casseroles that are heavy on seafood that are actually um, kind of expensive now. So like two cans of crab meat, two cans of shrimp, one can of lobster. Um, the tuna you can get cheaper, but this lobster and crab meat, if you want the good kind that doesn't taste, you know, like, polluted ocean, if you know what I mean, <laughs> uh, then you're going to actually pay um, quite a bit for those. Um, but here we have something, again, that's got lobster, crab meat, and shrimp. So this one's going to be, you know, kind of an expensive dish to make. Lamb shanks, of course, if you're in the United States, lamb is a premium. So, you know, I just priced lamb shanks the other day um, at Aldi's and it was about $25 um, for a small amount. So this right here would be extremely expensive um, for a U.S. resident to make. This recipe actually requires two whole chickens. Um, so, you know, bear in mind, some of the ones that she puts in here is actually for, you know, if you have a party, 
um, or if you're having guests come over and you want to be able to prepare something ahead of time, you know, without having to cook right at the last minute. And now we're getting into the desserts like cracker pie. We've got some chocolate mint angel cake, which sounds good, and some ice creams. I thought this was really interesting. Um, you know, she makes these ice creams without having to buy an ice cream maker. So this would be something, you know, in the summer that might be pretty fun to try. Her odds and ends are caviar dip. And then we've got cold sauce and hot sauce for ham. So overall, it's cute. You know, I got this uh, all four in a bundle, um, but would I have bought number three individually? Maybe not because, you know, it is, like I said, very heavy on seafood that uh, I think is very expensive if you don't get, um, you know, the higher quality brand. And, you know, with the veal and the lamb, you know, these are dishes that kind of stay on the expensive side. So not something I would be interested in making. So there you go, a little review of book number three. And now let me show you what I actually found about the Goodfellow family. Now, oddly enough, I really couldn't find anything about Barbara herself, but I did find where her husband, Rear Admiral Alexander Scott Goodfellow, died in 1985 of cardiac arrest when he was only 68. Now, you can see here this article talks a little bit about his naval career. And it mentions Barbara uh, as his wife and then, of course, his children, um, but it doesn't actually say anything more about them. Now, I did see where there's another article that was in the New York Times in 1964 talking about how Barbara Goodfellow's cookbooks has raised quite a bit of money for cystic fibrosis research. The article goes on to say that you could order the cookbooks for $1.25 each. Half of that would go to the research foundation and you would receive your cookbook in a colorful envelope, uh, the color depending on which number of cookbook that you ordered, which I think is really cute and a really great idea to use some of your profits for a good cause. Now, here we have another little article about Anne Goodfellow, who was her daughter-in-law, talking about how she met the son, Scott Goodfellow, in 1966 on a blind date. They ended up getting married, and this is important because they actually co-authored a sequel to his mother's cookbook, Make It Now, Bake It Later, uh, in which they kind of updated some of the recipes and added some of their own. Now, tragically, her son, Scott Goodfellow, who had released that cookbook, died, it looks like, just a year after the publication of it, of a heart attack. You can see where the obituary does mention that, you know, they had made the new publication of Make It Now, Bake It Later. You can see he survived by his wife Anne and two daughters. Now, unfortunately, that was all I could actually find about the family. Um, and besides going on eBay and perusing all the different incarnations of you know, make it now, bake it later, there's really not much more to go on. But apart from that, uh, it seems like Barbara Goodfellow kind of fell off the internet map, so I wasn't able to find much more. But at least we do have her cookbooks that we can look at and make some really good meals from. All right, we're ready to pull this out, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little worried. It doesn't look as appetizing as I thought it was going to. <laughs> that does not look good. Well, yeah, we've been surprised before, though. That's true. I mean, looks are deceiving. This could be the greatest thing we've ever eaten. Um, we shall see. I just don't know. Okay, we're going to plate up, and we're going to try it, and we'll let you know if this is something you actually need to uh, make or if you need to avoid this at all costs. <laughs> okay, 
Are we looking forward to this taste test? <laughs> no. <laughs> I I really I thought it would look better. It's not very aesthetic. I'll, no, no, not particularly. It's aesthetic. worrying me a little, but okay. Nope. We we got to do it. In for a penny, in for a pound. <laughs> Okay. Do we like this? I think I do. I like I think so. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. It's a weird taste. Like it's definitely like not what I expected though. No, it's sweet. You know, it's you got sweet. the brown yeah. sugar. Yep. Oh, I didn't know you had brown sugar, but Yeah. <laughs> you got that. The the ketchup actually has a lot of flavor that yeah. it adds, I think. And then you got the apples. Mm hmm But it's actually pretty good. I am shocked. I am, okay. I am so surprised because the look, I mean, I felt like the look was bad. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, did the rice get too crunchy? Did the apples not bake enough? Did this, you know, you're kind of worried about it. But then you eat it <laughs> and you're like, I think. I, I think I would make this again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'd eat it again. This is so weird to me. Okay. <laughs> Barbara, why did we ever, ever underestimate you? Doubt you? We, I mean, by now, we're like, it, we've done two of hers already. We should have known. Yeah. You know, we should stop doubting. <laughs> <laughs> And just trust that Barbara knew what she was talking about, and she knew what was good. So, wow! Okay, you know what? I am actually going to recommend you try this. Yeah, I agree. You know, I think, now be prepared because, you know, it does have a more sweet taste to it, obviously, because of the brown sugar. Right. Um, so, don't look for, like, a super savory dish, but... I think the savoriness of the sausage does really well to balance that out. Yeah, that's a good balanced flavor, I think. Yes! Like it's, it's a sweet, it's sweet as far as like what I would expect for a typical like entree dinner maybe, mm -hmm. but not so sweet that it feels like a dessert or anything like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it still feels like it's an actual like meal. The more I eat it, the more I'm convinced that this might be a new favorite dish for me. It, this, <laughs> this is just so weird to me. Okay. So there you go. Um, we have a really surprise winner yep. of a dish. But stay tuned because we did number three. We got number four next. So we're going to try that one out and have another make it now, bake it later dinner. And... Hopefully, we can pull out four really good ones. Yeah. We're three for three, so let's see if we can stay on our streak. I think with Barbara, we're going to be able to. I mean, <laughs> I'm convinced now. I know. Yeah. She can make anything taste good, <laughs> apparently. So, anyway, <laughs> there you go for another uh, Make It Now, Bake It Later dinner. Hope you try it because you're going to be really surprised and glad that you did. And stay tuned for next week. We're going to have number four. And thanks for watching this one. We'll see you then. Bye. And if you like historical cooking and unusual cookbooks, here's two more videos you might enjoy. And make sure to like and subscribe for more foodie adventures.